One more thing I want to say on this trend, I think a lot of parents and a lot of non-parents look at our public policy over the last four years and ask, how did we get to this place? How did we get to a place where Kamala Harris is calling for an end to the child tax credit? How did the Democrats hate Israel. The Democrats largely hate the Jewish people. It's time for the Jewish people to step up and vote for Republicans and vote for Donald Trump. Yeah, of course, Trey. And you know, I was critical of the president back in 2015 and 2016, and he has looked at me as somebody who can contribute meaningfully to the future of the country. So he asked me to be his running mate. Uh, this is not a vengeful guy. The media lies about Donald Trump more than anybody I've ever seen in public life. He's he has a new insult out this week that her and her husband have been using towards you, calling yeah. you weird. Does that hurt your feelings? How do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, no, not at all. It doesn't hurt my feelings. He has a new insult out this week that her and her husband have been using towards you, calling yeah. you weird. Does that hurt your feelings? How do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, Does that hurt your feelings? How do you feel about that? Uh, Does that hurt your feelings? How do you feel about that? Uh, when she got elected to the U.S. Senate, I was the majority leader. I reached out to meet with her. Not once would she meet with me. If I she doesn't have to go out there and sell sneakers or Bibles, you know? All she did was announce that she's running, and they said, where do we sign up? And I think she's going to give Trump what he needs. He ain't ready for this one. The level of energy is higher, and we just got to keep this up. We only have 100 days left. We can run through the finish line. Don't slow down, but keep going. But what we are going to focus on, we're not going to be bothered by their nonsense. We're going to focus on the fundamental choice. Uh, the people are going to, the American people are going to see in Vice President Harris, somebody who, whether they were a prosecutor standing up for women and girls, whether they were an attorney general taking on the big banks uh, to get $20 billion for homeowners and their families, or somebody who, when they were in the Senate or as vice president, has stood up for reproductive rights, uh, uh, taken on uh, the gun lobby to establishing the first White House uh, Office of Gun Violence Prevention, has been a champion for working people. And on the other side, you got Donald Donald Trump, who's a convicted felon fighting for himself. So that's the choice that we're going to make sure that the American people understand uh, when they go to the ballot box in November. Now, Do you think that having Vice President Kamala Harris as the nominee dramatically changes Donald Trump's odds of winning? I'm worried about it. Okay. Yes. I think she's going to go for the minority and female and young, younger voters. Progressive. Everybody's excited about her, right. and that scares me. Again, those are Trump voters. Joe Biden won. Okay, so a buyer's remorse. You just heard what Jason Miller had to say. Uh, are you hearing that from Democrats? Oh, my goodness. We are seeing more energy than I've ever seen in politics. Uh, I went this morning uh, to what's supposed to be a ruby red county on this weekend of action. They were hoping there might be 50 people, and we had 300 plus. They are fired up. They don't want to go back. They want to move forward. They are excited about making Vice President Harris our next president. You see the fundraising. You see thousands upon thousands of uh, people signing up to volunteer. Uh, she is on a roll. We're going to keep this energy up, and we are going to elect her as the next president of the United States. Just in the past few days, Democrats have kind of organically settled on a new attack line against Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. Basically, these guys are just plain weird. You know there's something wrong with people when they talk about freedom, freedom to be in your bedroom, freedom to be in your exam room, freedom to tell your kids what they can read. That stuff is weird. They come across weird. They seem obsessed with this. We're using this fake living room to talk to you about a super weird idea from J.D. Vance. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's quite weird. But what was weird was him joking about racism today and, and, and then talking about Diet Mountain Dew. Who, who drinks Diet Mountain Dew? And on the other side, they're just weird. I mean, they really are. Some of what he and his running mate are saying, well, it's just plain weird. <laughs> Let in that environment, if people see Republican as not Trump. as the party that's trying to make it easier I to have babies, have so much but just trying to take people's rights name. away. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to but thank especially Kevin news. Roberts and all After of the Heritage election, Foundation for 50 Madam years President. of incredible work on conservative policy. 
Uh, you know, the old famous, it's funny because I, I think we're in her district right now, uh, but I'm regularly asked by donors in Ohio whether um, I'm, I'd be willing to denounce MTG, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the congressman from, if not this part of Georgia, at least close, close by. And I would say, why? Why do you want me to denounce this person? Well, she believes these crazy things. Who cares? Believing crazy things is not the mark of whether somebody should be rejected. Believing important truths should be the mark of whether we accept somebody. And if they believe some crazy things on the side, that's fine. We need to be okay with non-conventional people. Super excited. I've always gone to the polls with my father. I think this is going to be a great experience. Nelson was one of the speakers at a Harris for President event on Thursday. He tells me he's proud to be a representative for young voters. I think it's important seeing that Kamala is now here for the youth, here for the people that are my age. Who do you plan to vote for? Uh, Kamala. Kamala. And why? Um, I kind of just agree more with her policies that she has ideas for, and she's not a felon. For our women's reproductive rights. Now, gang, you could not have a clear contrast in this race. You could not have a clear contrast between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And let me tell you something, he's pretty afraid. Y'all see, he's, he's backing out of the debate now. He's afraid to stand toe to toe with our vice president. And you know why that is. It's not just because she's a skilled debater. It's not just because she's got the right positions on the issues that matter most to the good people of Pennsylvania and this country. It's because he can't run away from his record any longer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Think right. about it. Four years as president, guy stacks the NLRB with a bunch of corporate folks who have tried to rip away your rights every step of the way. Right. We can't go back to that, can't and he back. can't defend that. Right. Hey, Kamala. What are we going to say to Donald Trump in November? Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. bye, bye. Look, I think Kamala Harris is exactly what Donald Trump is afraid of. Look, he's been talking about all of these issues on the border. She went down okay. uh, to South America, Central America, to try to help from the root of the all problem, right. not the symptoms. If Donald Trump cared about the border, he wouldn't have blocked policies right. to we're, change we're, it. We're going to move on. Uh this is the most consequential election of any of our lifetimes. And I would say that even, even to no matter what the, the age of the person is, because uh, we're going we're gonna to decide major issues, as you've highlighted over and over again, on basic rights. We're also going to decide, decide whether or not we're going to have a country that, that has a tax code that's going to invest in the middle class, invest in our kids, or whether we're going to have kind of a MAGA tax code where it all goes to the top to billionaires and big corporations. So, so, so much is on the line. And I think the people of our state know that. They, they have a sense of it. And I've never seen a lift like we've seen just in the last couple of days. The only thing comparable is, a, is a, the, the uh, early months or, or, or maybe the summer of 2008 when President Obama was running. It's the same kind of energy and, and dynamism that uh, you hear from voters of all ages all across the board. I mean, even before we had J.D. Vance, we know that the policies that they're pushing, the policies that are coming out of Project 2025 are nothing but attacks on women. As someone who is childless, I absolutely resent, um, you know, all of the rhetoric that we're getting out of J.D. Vance. But what the American people need to think about is the very first big step that a nominee has to take, the very first big decision that they have to make is who their running mate will be. And the fact that Trump chose J.D. Vance tells you everything about his decision-making abilities that you need to know. He does not make good decisions. J.D. Vance is a disaster for Trump. That is exactly why they're hemorrhaging and they're panicking right now. You know, I think that Trump decided that he just wants someone 
wanted someone who would pledge their fealty to him and say, hey, if it comes down to certifying the election, even if you lost, I'm going to do what Mike Pence didn't do, which is why I have to give Mike Pence credit, because when it came down to preserving who we are as Americans, it didn't become partisan. He absolutely put the United States over um, policies and, and uh, rhetoric. It's that Trump is a really bad candidate, and frankly, I think a really bad person. <laughs> Kamala. Hello. Hi. Hey there. Oh, hi. You're both together. Oh, it's good to hear you both. I, I, I can't have this phone call without saying to my girl Kamala, I am proud of you. This is going to be historic. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and, and into the Oval Office. Oh my goodness. Michelle Brock, this means so much to me. I am looking forward to doing this with the two of you, Doug and I both, and um, getting out there, being on the road. But most of all, I just want to tell you the, the words you have spoken and the friendship that you have given over all these years mean more than I can express. So thank you both means so much and um, and we're gonna have some fun with this too aren't we okay look here, here's a situation Let, let's say roe versus wade is overruled ohio ohio bans abortion um you know in 2022 or 2000 let's say 2024 and then you know every day george soros sends a 747 to Columbus mm -hmm. That's to right. load up yeah. disproportionately black women to get them to go have abortions in California. And of course, the left will celebrate this as a victory yes. for diversity. Uh, that's kind of creepy, health, just, right? health justice. These are me exterminate that's, that's right. working yeah. class black yeah. people. Yeah. It, it, something yeah, it, really. It, exactly. Yeah, something like that could. I mean, that would be a the really equity. weird turn of events that could happen. Yeah. Yes. And, and it's like, if that happens, do you need some federal response to prevent it from happening? Because it's really creepy. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sympathetic to that, actually. And, and th this is really extreme, this J.D. Vance. Now, keep in mind, not 20 years ago, not when he was in college, just in the last few months as a United States senator, he voted against protecting IVF. He voted against protecting contraception, birth control. And maybe the most telling vote of all, only 28 senators voted with him. He voted to allow law enforcement to get the medical records of women in America. He thinks you know, it's okay for the police to get medical records. That, that just is, that's jaw-dropping to most swing voters. Not acceptable in America. Madam Vice President, are you on TikTok? Well, I've heard that recently I've been on the For You page, so I thought I'd get on here myself. Um, he didn't. He, he, when it came to the vice president, referred to her as a childless cat lady. What, what did you think of that? Yeah, again, I just think that's that's beneath the dignity of anybody who uh, seeks to present themselves as a, a U.S. senator or any kind of leader in this country. And uh, I, I'm not here to talk about campaigns and elections, so I'll just leave it at that. I think I it speaks for itself. I told you I would tell you why it's bad, maybe add a little bit of color, but also tell you why we're going to win. We are winning. There are a lot of victories that have been secured. Some of them are partial. Some of them in ways that the other side doesn't yet know are foundations for what's coming. And that's just the beginning. And we're not going to tell you everything that's coming. Because for the first time that I'm aware of, the conservative movement, or as I really like to put it, the common sense movement in the United States has really nothing to do with ideology, is ready to fight. Well, the blue wall is very important, no doubt, to Democrats. And so, you know, when J.D. Vance, frankly, attacks women, uh, hides the fact that he is uh, opposed to reproductive rights, even in cases of rape or incest, uh, you know, he's the Donald Trump mini-me. Donald Trump has done terribly uh, in Illinois. And across the Midwest, there is a growing sense that J.D. Vance just doesn't stand where most Illinoisans and most Midwesterners stand. But look, what I was basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, 
Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? I just wanted to ask that question and propose. President Biden and Vice President Harris inherited a public health catastrophe, an economic catastrophe, and a democracy catastrophe at the same time. And under the leadership of President Biden, in partnership with Vice President Harris, House Democrats and Senate Democrats have turned things around in order to create a brighter future for the American people. That's the Democratic track record. Extreme MAGA Republicans have been in the majority for over 18 months. Can anyone name a single thing that extreme MAGA Republicans in the House have done in order to make life better for the American people. A single thing that they have done. You can't. As many House Republicans, like the distinguished gentleman from Texas, the Honorable Chip Roy, have pointed out, you can't name a single thing that extreme MAGA Republicans have done on their own to make life better for the American people. They are incapable of governing. And so there's a big difference between the leadership of President Biden, Vice President Harris, House Democrats, and Senate Democrats, and the chaos, dysfunction, and extremism that we've consistently seen from House Republicans. Listen, there is so much excitement in the Democratic Party right now. Uh, I have not seen this much mobilization and energy in such a short window of time, probably not since, you know, the, the Obama convention time, right? When people saw him in that, st in that stadium and, and there was so much energy across the party. But we see that right now in the Democratic Party. Uh, and it's amazing. And we're just trying to, this is the great thing. For the last three and a half years, thanks to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, we've been able to rebuild all of the parties in our 50 states so that they can now accommodate this energy and focus this energy into doing the grassroots activities as, that are necessary to win these close elections. And that's what we're going to do. And that's a stark contrast to the Republican Party that doesn't have any field offices, that don't have any ground game. Uh, they're just hoarding money, I guess, to pay Donald Trump's legal bills. Yep. Very much so. Same thing in Kansas. They got the people are voting. And so, Everybody wanted that issue. The abortion, they didn't want to roll And now the states have to keep on tying you to Project 2025, which is a 900 page uh, tomb put out by the Heritage Foundation. What is your response to what's in it? And what would you like to say about the role it's playing in your campaign? It's a group of very, very conservative people. And they wrote a document that many of the points are fine. My fellow Americans, it's been the privilege of my life to serve this nation for over 50 years. Nowhere else on earth could a kid with a stutter from modest beginnings in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Claymont, Delaware, one day sit behind the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office as President of the United States. But here I am. That's what's so special about America. We are a nation of promise and possibilities, of dreamers and doers, of ordinary Americans doing extraordinary things. I've given my heart and my soul to our nation, like so many others. I've been blessed a million times in return with the love and support of the American people. I hope you have some idea how grateful I am to all of you. The great thing about America is here Kings and dictators do not rule. The people do. History is in your hands. The power is in your hands. The idea of America lies in your hands. You just have to keep faith, keep the faith, and remember who we are. We're the United States of America, and there's simply nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. So let's act together.
preserve our democracy. God bless you all. May God protect our troops. Well, look, I think that this is a true toss up race in Georgia. And by now, folks across the country are used to seeing just how narrow the margins will be in my state. The vice president will be here on Tuesday. We've seen thousands and thousands of volunteer signups here in Georgia just over the past few days. I expect her to win Georgia. It's going to take a mighty effort, the kind of effort that we summoned here in Georgia to deliver the state for President Biden in November of 2020 and to win those two historic Senate runoff victories in 2021. Michigan registered voters put her and the former president at 49 percent each. That's three percentage better percentage points better than President Biden was performing in Minnesota. The presumptive Democratic nominee is up and has a six point advantage there. They are both tied at 49 in Pennsylvania. And former President Trump has a one point lead in Wisconsin. Those results are comparable with the Trump versus Biden numbers. Many of the new polls coming out nationally and in the swing states have been within the margin of error in this new race. This but we are clear eyed as we work to build a brighter future and to move our nation forward. There are those who are really trying to take us backward. And you, I'm sure, have seen their agenda. Project 2025. Randy, can you believe they put that thing in writing? <laughs> 900 pages in writing. So Project 2025 is a plan to return America to a dark past. Donald Trump and his extreme allies want to take our nation back to failed trickle-down economic policies, back to union busting, back to tax breaks for billionaires. Donald Trump and his allies want to cut Medicare and Social Security to stop student loan forgiveness for teachers and other public servants. And I say to AFT, they even want to eliminate the Department of Education and end Head Start, which of course would take away preschool from hundreds of thousands of our children. He intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations and make working families foot the bill. And he intends to end the Affordable Care Act. Now think about that. To take us back to a time when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. Remember what that was like? Children with asthma, women who survived breast cancer, grandparents with diabetes. You know, America has tried these failed economic policies before, but we are not going back. We are not going back. In this moment, I believe we face a choice between two different visions for our nation, one focused on the future the other focused on the past. And with your support, I am fighting for our nation's future. And let us be clear about what that future looks like. I know the leaders in this room, and I know the future we believe in and we fight for. We here believe in a future where, for example, everyone has affordable health care, which is why our administration capped the cost of insulin for our seniors at $35 a month. We believe in a future where no child has to grow up in poverty, which is why I helped pass the child tax credit, which cut child poverty in half and cut black child poverty even more. We believe in a future where the economy works for working people. That is why we forgave 
student loan debt for more than 5 million Americans. And if you or anyone you know benefited from that, please testify. <laughs> And we are finally making it so that medical debt can no longer be used against your credit score. And it is because of our collective vision for the future that we continue to fight for affordable child care, affordable elder care, and paid family leave. So in the days and weeks ahead, I, together with you, will do everything in my power to unite our Democratic Party, to unite our nation, and to win this election. You know, as many of you know, before I was elected as Vice President, before I was elected as United States Senator, I was the elected Attorney General, as I've mentioned, of California, and before that I was a courtroom prosecutor. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. I mean, if, if, if he does not try to get out of the debates and, and you know, Joe, I uh, mean, uh, Donald Trump and I both come from uh, New York and Brooklyn. We call him a, a, a punk in the streets. I don't think he wants to debate Kamala Harris you think, because you think I think he'll be afraid to debate. Oh, he's a political Kamala punk. Harris? There's no doubt about it. Really? And I think that if his friend uh, was promoting the uh, the about uh, Don King, it would be the prosecutor versus the felon. That's how you would promote <laughs> it. Sick of this? Well, think about this. He's a world leader in temper tantrums. She never loses her cool. She prosecuted sex predators. He is one. Grab him by the She shut down for-profit colleges that swindled Americans. He was a for-profit college. At Trump University, we teach success. Literally. He's owned by the big banks. She's the attorney general who beat the biggest banks in America and forced them to pay homeowners $18 billion. He's tearing us apart. She'll bring us together. This is Trump. And in every possible way, this is the anti-Trump. So if that's what you're looking for in your next president, there's really only one. Kamala. Hey, machine. Son of a toy. He's sending Mark back in time. For the last five years... Billionaires, not working families. Now, he's trapped in the past. And only Dr. Brown can help him get back to the future. What the world needs now is a love, sweet love. Let's remember who we are. We're the United States of America. Dear those who munch on this channel, yes, that's you, 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 and you over there. Your mission, should you choose to accept, is to get yourself to invite more people along to the 24-7 Eyes channel. Please get them to subscribe any day between Monday to Sunday before 10 p.m. November 5th. For daily roasts with a political option, an extra room for those wanting Dems on board. There will be gossip, banter, and funny bits to be shared every day as the British outsider Tony delivers non-stop what he's found round from America's political bag. This message will self-destruct and end in three, two, one.